Well, good morning. I'm Dr. Cynthia Morris. Welcome. Welcome to Family Dominion Ministries. We're helping to equip families to take dominion over all the works of the enemy. I love you. God loves you. And I am so absolutely delighted that you are tuning in. And I do appreciate all the positive feedback that I'm getting on this particular teaching on commitment. And so uh, God bless you. God bless you. I love you and I love your families. And I am praying for your families. Amen. So we're still talking about having a fully committed heart toward God. God wants you to be fully committed to his agenda. Amen. I know we have lots of things that we want to do for ourselves, for our families, for our marriages, you know, for, for our churches, you know, but really Christ needs to be at the center of everything that we do. He just does. He needs to be there guiding and directing us by his spirit in terms of where he wants us to go and what he wants us to do. Amen. Otherwise, I don't know, sometimes we're just kind of wasting our time. Amen. And we don't want to waste our time. We want to be productive for the kingdom of God. Amen. So go ahead and open up your Bibles. So we're going to go back over to Second Chronicles 69. And then we're going to continue in this teaching on having a fully committed heart. God wants a hundred percent of your heart. Amen. A hundred percent. He doesn't want a lukewarm relationship. He wants a relationship with you that is red hot. Amen. On fire. You know, I mean, anyone out there, if you're married, you know, that's what you would want from your spouse. You know, you want an intimate, sizzling hot, romantic, fulfilling relationship. Amen. Yeah, that's what you want. So we want to give God everything that we have to offer. And the only thing that he really wants, quite honestly, is that he just wants our heart. All he wants is your heart. Amen. Let's take and put your hand on your heart real quickly and say, Lord, and don't, don't say this if you don't mean it. Only say it if you mean it. Say, Lord, you have my whole heart for my whole life. Say that again if you really mean it. Lord, you have my whole heart for my whole life. My whole heart for my whole life in Jesus' name. Amen. Again, don't say that if you don't mean it. Amen. Because God is not interested in empty words. And of course, he knows if you don't really mean it because he can see what is in your heart. He knows. You can hide things from everybody else, but you can't hide anything from the Lord. Amen. He knows the very intimate details of our hearts. He knows our intentions. He knows our attitudes. He knows what we're going to do next week, next month, next year, 10 years from now. He knows. But if you, meant, if you really meant that, Take that, take that phrase I just gave you and begin to say it. You know, sometimes people will say something one time and think, okay, I'm done. No, you need to say it more than once. Sometimes I might say that two, three times a day. Lord, I love you. You know, you have my whole heart for my whole life. Amen. You know, if you're, again, if you're married, I keep making these parallels between, between like husband and wife you know, marital relationships and then Christ and his church because the Bible says that those things are very similar. Amen. But as, as, a, as husband and wife, don't you love it when your husband or your wife says, you know, baby, I love you and I'm just going to be with you until the end. Amen. I joke with my husband sometimes and I say, listen, you know, I say, I'm like the gum underneath your shoe. You, can, you will not get rid of me. You know, and of course, that's just a little joke that we tell. He, you know, and, uh, and so, but the, the point being is that I, I just always want him to know that he has my heart, that he didn't have to worry about me sharing my, my heart or split my loyalty between him and someone else. Say, so no one can take your place. You know, I hope, I hope you tell your spouse that type of thing. Baby, no one can take your place in my life. There's not another woman on this planet. There's not another man. No one out there can take your place. You are irreplaceable in my life. There might be some that might try to compete to win my heart, but my heart belongs to you. A hundred percent. Amen. A hundred percent. You know, God, God loves to hear that. Even though he knows what's in your heart, God still likes for you to say it. He likes to hear it. And your spouse likes to hear that. I can't think of anybody out there, if you're married, that your husband and wife wouldn't love to hear that, you know. And so I tell my husband this stuff from time to time. I say, I'll tell him, hey, I love you more now than when I first met you. You know, I said, next to Jesus and stuff, you're the love of my life. You're second only to Jesus. And that ain't bad. 
you know. So it's good for you to do like, it's, it's a really, it's a reaffirmation, it's a reaffirming, it's a, re, it's a type of rededication, amen? And so it's a, it's a good thing to say. It doesn't negate what you already feel. It just, it actually strengthens, it fortifies what it is that's in your heart. And the more you speak it, the more you believe it, the more you say it, the more you speak it, the more you believe it, it becomes a cycle. And not only that, it begins to go to work in your life as well. And then the corresponding action ensues. You know, when I say stuff like that, it makes me want to do wonderful things for my husband. I know sometimes he likes little things and I'll just uh, stop by the store and pick it up. Like he likes certain types of candies or certain types of, uh, of you know, just different types of food that he, that he likes. So when I go out, I try to pick those things up for him and then I'll take it and I'll set it on the nightstand. You know, because when you're committed to people, you want to love on them. You want to do nice things for them. Amen. Just like with God, you know, we want to do nice things for him. You know, this year, um, I felt the Holy Spirit quicken my heart and say, Cynthia, I want you to increase your giving. Increase your giving to, to, to your church, to your local church where you go. You know, you guys all know I go to Beyond the Veil. And, um, and I was going to get with my pastor and tell him what the Lord spoke into my heart. And, you know, but, uh, but I got a little bit sidetracked after church was over because I like to share things with him and with, with our first lady. And, uh, and then one Wednesday night when I was ministering, the Holy Spirit <clears throat> sometimes will do this with me. He'll help me to actually say what it is that he's telling me to do. And I think he does that for two reasons. Number one is because, you know, when you say something, then basically it makes you accountable to the people that have heard it. Just like when you get married and you say your vows in front of all those people that are watching you, that you're going to stay with one another to, you know, that are, uh, to, for rich or poor and sickness and in health, you know, uh, just all the different things and stuff that those vows uh, that are written into those traditional vows. And so now you're stuck because you've said it. And so the Holy Spirit quickened me. He's done it to me on more than one occasion. And I said, you know, the Lord is quickening me to increase my giving by, you know, and I even said the amount, not to make me look good, but you know, it was just, you know, what the Lord spoke into my heart. Now they didn't know how much I was already giving to the church. I just said, this is what the Lord told me to increase it to. I'm not going to say it now because I don't feel led to say it now. But I also believe that the, that the Holy Ghost had me to do that because God uses us as a, as a means, as an example, to encourage other people, amen, to become more committed, to push them toward change, amen. Being fully committed, it will force you to change, to change what you're doing. And that's good because we all should be growing in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Change, change is a part of the Christian experience. The God who never changes is calling us to change, amen? So let me go ahead really quickly. I, I'm gonna, I, I don't wanna continue to go until I do the announcements real fast. Okay, so again, if you're not a part of the Gideon 300, God bless KPLE TV, love this station, love the staff. Uh, God bless you, Miss Mason. So if you are not a part of the, of the Gideon 300, we want you to pray about becoming a partner with this station. Give $25 a month uh, um, or more as the Spirit of God leads you uh, to sow into KPLA TV so this station can stay on the air. So programs like this can continue to be broadcasted. And so we can, so this word can literally go everywhere, all over the world. It's in YouTube, it's in everywhere. So it's, it's impacting people everywhere throughout this community and beyond. So pledge to become a partner. Trust God, don't be afraid to give. People tend to pull back from commitment because of fear. People don't want to get married because they're afraid of losing their freedom. People don't want to give money because they're afraid they won't have enough. People, don't, people are afraid of, of commitment because they're selfish, amen? It's lots of different reasons why people will not commit but I tell you, if you will commit to God's agenda, to his plan, you will never, ever regret it. Never, not in a million years will you regret it. If he tells you to do something, trust me, get ready for the windfall. Get ready for the blessings because it's, go it's, it's going to come. It will come. So so into this, into this station, be a blessing, amen. Don't hold back. Whatever God speaks into your heart to give, do it. Do it with all of your might. Be a prompt to do it giver, a generous giver, amen. 
That's something in the church we struggle with, guys, quite honestly. We struggle with giving. That spirit of mammon is alive and well in the planet and a part of this secular economic system that Satan, the God of this world, is in total control over. You know, and so I tell you, you know, uh, a lot of people, they, some people love money more than they love God because you can't serve both. You can't serve mammon and God too. You're going to love the one and hate the other, cleave the one and leave the other, but you can't serve both. You can't have one foot in and one foot out. Okay, so God is saying be completely sold out, you know, to doing what my money, again, is God's and not yours, what I want you to do. Amen. This is all in, in alignment with the teaching today on commitment. I know a lot of folks don't like you talking about money. I know a lot of people think that tithing and, and giving offerings and stuff is Old Testament. Well, the Bible didn't do away with it, and you can't either. Now, you might not like what I just said, but that's okay. Your problem is not with me. Your problem is with this word because God never got rid of it. Amen? So that's just some people's reasons for why they do not want to give. <laughs> Selfishness, rebellion, disobedience. You know, the list just goes on and on and on and on. You know, so definitely uh, give, you know, and don't, don't send your tithe. Let me just say that real quickly. Do not send your tithe. Don't send it to me. Don't send your tithe to KPLE. Your tithe goes to your local church. That's where you should be sowing your tithe. But God is okay with you giving offerings to support KPLE, to support any ministry on, that comes on KPLE. Amen. But the tithe goes to the local church. Support your pastor. Support the local church. Commit to giving. Amen. Make that commitment. Start this year. I don't know why I'm doing this, but I'm sure it's the Holy Ghost. Commit this year to becoming a tither or commit this year. Even if you are tithing, then commit this year and say, Lord, I just want you to challenge me to move beyond. Maybe you've been given a certain amount of, of, of offerings for like maybe the last five or 10 or 11 years and you haven't given beyond that. Well, God wants to stretch you, I'm sure. I'm sure you're blessed from where you were to where you are. So, Lord, challenge me. Just hold your hand up. Lord, challenge me. Challenge me in terms of my giving. I don't want to be greedy, Father. I don't want to be stingy. I don't want to be covetous. And I don't want to become complacent either. I want, I want to change. I want to grow. And I want to grow for the purposes and stuff. So I'm able to bless the kingdom, to advance the kingdom of God. So, Lord, I'm asking you to challenge me and to speak to my heart in terms of my giving. Not just the KPLE, not just the this program my local church and anywhere else that you want me to give and Lord I'm just going to trust you and you can say this after I'm saying it. you can repeat after me Lord I'm just going to trust you that even if I don't physically have the money or even you know know where the money's going to come from I'm going to trust that you are a big enough God we serve a great God that you're a big enough God to get to us exactly what we need and you will give your word tells us that you will give seed to sow and bread for food seed to sow and bread for food. That's how good God is. So God, I'm just going to trust you. I'm going to trust you because I want to give. God, I have a desire to give more to the kingdom. It is more blessed to give than it is to receive. And Lord, I repent if I've been consuming more of the seed that you've given me to be a steward over if I've been sowing more of that upon myself than I am sowing into the kingdom. God, forgive me Father God, I choose to just let go of that attitude. Father God, I'm not going to get caught up in this worldly mentality, allow the spirit of mammon to rule and to dictate in my life. I'm a born again believer. And Father, I give freely. I give generously. I'm a prompt to do it giver because I love you, Father, and I love your church and I want to advance your kingdom. I want to reach people with this word. I am a soul winner. and I want to do what I can to get the word of God spread throughout this entire world in Jesus' name. Amen. Didn't plan on saying any of that this morning, but if you're out there, if that's the situation with you, then you grab hold of that. If you mean it with all of your heart, I'm telling you, the spirit of God will begin to move. You know, if you will just say, yes, sir, if that's what you want me to do, I'm just going to trust you that, and I'm just going to do it. I'm going to step out. You know, a lot of times you just got to step out. That's what faith is. Amen. You know, if you already had it, that wouldn't be faith. God is always pushing us beyond where we are. If you can make it happen, that's not really faith, you know, but real, real faith is like when you know you got to believe God, that if God doesn't step in and intervene, you don't know how things are going to pan out or how things are going to work out. 
So you just trust that God's going to do it. How he's going to do it? Hey, I don't even care about how God does it. I don't care about the methodology. Like, can you show me the method? I don't care. I just care about the results. Because God is, hey, you know, God will come by it honest. He's not going to do anything illegal. Amen. Because he's a God of integrity. So he'll get you what you need. He's not going to rob a bank and stuff to get you the money. Amen. But I don't, I was like, Lord, how you do it is your business. All I know that my business, or rather your business in terms of what you want me to do, is to do with that money what you told me to do. To, you, to take and use your money, your money, in terms of what you want me to do. Amen. And maybe God is speaking to you about looking at your lifestyle. Maybe you need to like, consider maybe like making some adjustments with your lifestyle. Right now at our church, we're doing a teaching on, on, uh, on financial freedom. Uh, helping people to, 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 to handle God's money better. Amen. Stop living beyond your means and being a better steward. You know, commit to being a better steward of everything that God has given you, which includes money. You know, because God hadn't called us to, to be in debt. God has called us to be free financially, financial freedom. Amen. So we were able to give more to the work of the ministry. So we're able and stuff to get the word of God out so churches can do the types of things that God has called them to do. So other ministries and stuff that they can launch out and do what they've been called to do. Amen. So that, so that, that means that you're going to have to make a commitment to a lifestyle change, which begins honestly in your spirit. Sometimes when people talk about money, when you talk about money problems, it's not money is not the problem as much as your love for money is the attitude you have and also your behavior. And of course, it's spiritual things that are happening as well. But you can throw money at people all the time. But if, if there's not a change in their soul, amen, if they're not being fed so they're growing in their spirit, and if they don't be, change their behavior, their flesh and everything that's attached to that, they'll continue to have problems with debt and with money. They're just going to keep on having it. So God is saying, commit to change. Don't spend every penny that you have. Learn to save. When I give you something, learn to sow, to save, and to spend wisely. Sow first, save second, spend last, and spend wisely. And don't spend beyond your means. Don't spend till you don't have a, have a penny in your pocket or nothing in the bank. You know. So, and that takes you actually repenting if you've done that. I'm sorry, God, for what I've done. I've mismanaged your money. And number two, God, I, I commit myself to being a better steward, to learning more about money. Amen. The Bible tells us to become friends and stuff with, with mammon, with unrighteous mammon. That mean that you, you know, you got to love money or that you got to love this world system, but you don't understand the way the system works and then allow God to move beyond the system and do things in your life supernaturally to get your family out of debt. Hey, one of the top five reasons that people get divorced is because it's financial reasons. Too much debt, too much spending, too much wasting. You know, uh, I'm telling you, those things happen. So I'm sure this is for a lot of somebodies out there. And if you don't take it, I'll take it. <laughs> Praise God. I mean, I'm preaching my own self happy up here, teaching my own self happy. But just consider that. Amen. And then also the thing I want to just uh, share with you real quickly, and we'll try to get as much into the rest of the teaching as I can, although technically we have, is that uh, you need to be a church. God is, it's a commandment. God is asking you to commit yourself to a local church. Go somewhere where you can commit. I'm committed to my pastor. And I'm committed to my pastor and my first lady and to my church because I know that they follow Christ. Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. As I look at their lives, I look at, at, at the things that they're doing with the church, I can commit to that. So I am committed to my church. I'm committed as a person, my gifts, well, when I say, well, the gifts God has given me, time, talent, treasure, all those things that God has given me, they're all gifts. I'm a steward over those things. I say, God, I commit all of those resources to my local church, you know, and to do whatever I can to support them. Guys, in these end times, the local church will become increasingly more important. Increasingly more important because people are looking for truth. They're looking for love. Many of them looking for love in all the wrong places. That's a song, but it's the truth. Amen. They're looking for it in all the wrong places. But God is saying the local church has the answer, the solution to whatever it is that we need to do. You know, uh, 
you know, in terms of how we reach out uh, to them. So be committed in doing whatever it is that God is speaking to your hearts to do with your local church. Amen. So let me just go ahead on and, and move on. And of course, the local churches are beyond the veil. Uh, Pastor Rodney Howell, Juanita Howell, and Christian House of Prayer, Pastor Valerie Holcomb. So it's okay. So let me go ahead on and uh, read Second Chronicles 69. And then I want to talk very briefly because we don't have a whole lot of time left. I want to talk real briefly about uh, at least one of the, at least the first thing uh, that we need to consider when we're looking at the issue of commitment. But let me read 2 Chronicles 69. So that states, for the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong on behalf of those whose hearts are loyal to him. Is your heart loyal to God? I hope that it is. Because I, it, I don't care, you know, where you are and, you know, and what you might do or who's in your life or whatever organizations you're affiliated with, your, your heart, you must give your heart to God first. And then that relationship dictates and mandates uh, to not just a greater degree in, in, its, in its totality, how you relate to everything else around you. So you want to give your heart to him. Amen. So be loyal to God first, you know. So he's looking for people whose hearts are loyal to him, whose hearts are completely his, whose hearts are fully committed to him, fully committed, completely in. So let me, let me see if I can get to like a part of, of the first thing that I wrote down that has to do with commitment. Probably won't get through the whole thing because I have so many notes up here. But when it comes to commitment, we need to count the cost and be willing to give up all to follow Christ. Give up everything, every single thing, you know, uh, because that's how it works. We have to give up all. And then once Christ becomes a sinner, then we have better perspective. And then he's able to come in by his spirit to help us to be able to look at what's in our lives so we can get rid of things that we really don't need or things that are unscriptural or things that are sinful and begin to commit ourselves to things that are a part of his will for our lives. Amen. And things that are righteous, you know, so quite frankly. So we need to be willing and stuff to follow him. You know, it's like Christ told a rich young ruler. But anyway, so but these days when it comes to like, you know, counting the cost, paying the price, a lot of people, they don't want to pay the price. Everybody, I heard Catherine Kuhlman say, everybody is looking for a bargain. Everybody wants something for nothing. Well, you don't get something for nothing. There really are no free lunches. Somebody is paying for that. Amen. So if you want something, you're going to have to give up something. God gave up Christ for us. So I guess a good question would be, can't we sacrifice and commit all to him? And that was a, that was a pretty good, com pretty big commitment. And that was a very precious gift. Amen. So, so is it really too much for God to ask us to give our whole hearts to him? The apostle Paul understood commitment and sacrifice. I love the apostle Paul, you know. Uh, formerly known as Saul, you know, railed against the church, was committed and stuff to persecuting Christians. God turned him around on the road to Damascus. And then he became fully committed to spreading the gospel and suffered many things for it and made tremendous sacrifices because of his commitment. Because commitment will always involve sacrifice. Here are a couple of things I want to read and stuff that really touched me about the Apostle Paul. And I, sometimes I'll say this and stuff and, and it just helps me to keep things in perspective where my own life is concerned. Philippians chapter one, and this is verses 21 through 25, it states, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. For I am hard pressed between the two, having a desire to depart and be with Christ, which is far better. Nevertheless, to remain in the flesh is, is more needful for you. And being confident of this, I know that I shall remain and continue with you all for your progress and joy of faith. I think I might have mentioned earlier that I had just been praying and believing God for to live. I want to live a, a long, full life. Uh, I want to be able to primarily do it because I want to be able to fulfill my destiny upon this planet. I'm committed to that. And it's not because I'm, a, I mean, me wanting to live and to not die right now, it's not because I'm afraid of dying because I know where I'm going to go when I leave here. So I can understand how the apostle Paul felt like, hey, to be with Christ is way better than being down here. But for your sake, you know, so living a longer life shouldn't you shouldn't be you being afraid of dying. 
or you just want to have a little bit more fun or, or, you know, or enjoy this world. You see, we, some of us think this world is the be all and the end all. And that's because we've never been to heaven. We've never been in a real, we have, we've never been like face to face with God or face to face with Jesus Christ. So we don't really have a, a real true frame of reference other than what we've written, we have read in this Bible. Amen. And the spirit of God has revealed to us. Amen. But once you're there and you see all of that, there really is no comparison. Those people that are in heaven would never come back here that are with the Lord. I mean, when people make the, the statement, you know, it doesn't get better than this. <laughs> okay, so the folks in heaven are saying, man, it doesn't get any better than this. And that's, that's an absolutely resolute statement to make. It doesn't get better than being with God. So who would want to leave God and come back down here? You know, so Paul is saying, but what Paul is saying is because I'm so committed to Christ, I'm willing to sacrifice and stay with you all because of the way it will benefit you. It's the, it's the point Paul was trying to make. Let me read you two more things about Paul I found pretty interesting. So over in Philippians 2.17, and again, he talks about it in 2 Timothy 4 and 6. Paul says, but even if I am being poured out like a drink offering on the sacrifice and service of your faith, I am glad and rejoice with you all. In 2 Timothy 4, 6, it states that he's, Paul is saying, for I am already being poured out as a drink offering and the time of my departure is at hand. Paul is saying, I'm so committed to the gospel. My service to God is so sacrificial that I'm just like, if you took a pitcher of water and poured it, poured it out, it's symbolic of Paul's service to the kingdom and to the body of Christ. You know, so Paul is saying, when I die, I'm going to die empty because my commitment is such to where I want to give everything that I have. I don't want to die full. I think it was Miles Monroe said, probably the richest place on the planet is the graveyard. The people that have died, they're full, never poured out of themselves, never committed to being the best that they can be, regardless if they were like serving God or if they were serving the devil. Only two kingdoms, right? You know, and so Paul is saying, I'm, I want to give everything and I do it gladly. I do it with great joy. I pour myself out and I think the same thing about me. And I hope you think the same thing about yourself. Lord, I pour myself out for my church, for my family, for my marriage, for the kingdom of God. Amen. I hope that's the way you feel. So we are out of time. God bless you. I love you. Have a great week.